Hey everybody, Steve at the Graphite Lab here. I hope everyone's doing well. Today I want to talk to you about how you can feed your dashboard the kind of information it needs in order to push out the, uh, the kind of information that you need. Um, this being the modular dashboard, what we're going to focus on today, being the main screen that most of us are going to see whenever we open up Service Titan, it's absolutely imperative that this is feeding us information that is accurate, that is up to date, and to make sure that we uh, we know what we're looking at exactly. Um, so good news is this is not wizardry. This is not rocket science. There's only three or four things that are probably holding you back from having an accurate dashboard if you see figures on here that you know are just not right. Um, we're going to get into what those are, how we can change them, and how to interpret the data that we're looking at. So without further ado, let's begin. All right, so the first thing that we're going to cover here is going to be total revenue. This seems, right, like on its face, you would think, all right, how much money has my company made in revenue? The way that this dashboard situates these numbers, what items are on an invoice, and the, the job has to be completed, but what items on that invoice are tied to a GL account that is uh, set up for income as a type? In other words, if you have completed invoices that have tons of revenue on them, but you don't have your GL accounts aligned properly to show these items are income items, it's not gonna show up on your, uh, on your dashboard. So what we wanna do here, and we go over to our price book, we, I recommend, honestly, if you're looking at service tasks, damn near all of this stuff should really be income items. Um, you wanna go to edit columns, right? Turn on here for general ledger accounts. So let's make sure, do we have the account? Do we have income account, right? If you don't see something on income account, or if you're over in your settings, right, and we see general ledger, and you see any of these where the type is not income and it's set to any of your service tasks, you wanna just make sure to fix that up first and foremost. This way, the actual revenue figures that you're seeing on your dashboard when all filters are open is right. That's going to give you the real amount of your total revenue. The only other things on this, again, if your job's incomplete, it's not going to show on here. You need to have the job done. It's not including sales necessarily. This is completed revenue that you essentially can now go after on the AR, right? So that's first things first, line up your GL accounts to every price book item. And if you want it showing on revenue, please make sure it is an income account on each item in your price book. That's step one, right? That, that will resolve the issue. If some of you all are having this, it's it's likely your snag. So you want to get in there and check that out. Um, item two, another thing that we see an awful lot, and granted, this is a dummy account as always, so you're not really going to be seeing uh, any real information in here. But call booking rate, mine's at zero. I don't take calls to a dummy to a dummy account. I do see folks in here though where I'll look at call booking rate and it's anywhere from 15% to 40%. And um you know, industry average is what on the low end 75. So it's easy to look at a call booking rate and say, yeah, that's not right. The next thing that you'd want to see with a call booking rate, right? We would scroll down to our agent scorecards, which again, dummy account, you're not going to see it on here, but please take my word for it. If your call booking rate is very low, the odds are you're going to have a list of CSRs and then in abandoned calls, near all of them, right? The other 65%, if you have a 35% booking rate, will probably be sitting in that abandoned call territory. There's one thing that needs to be done in order for this the call booking rates to magically work, and it just means everyone has to hit that green bubble. I know it's really difficult to get in the habit of it, especially when for years as a CSR, all I've had to do is just pick up the phone, book a job, hang up the phone. But in service Titan, if your CSRs are not, when they take a call in, hitting that green bubble here, right? Whenever a call comes through, clicking it, they are not going to be able to, uh, they're not gonna be able to register anything for your call booking rates. And every call that comes in will look like it was missed. 
therefore substantially lowering the call booking rate from where it really is. If you're looking to go back in time, right, you can go retroactively, just look back through the pile of calls that you may have in abandon, just reclassify them, and you'll notice how many of those probably were indeed um, unbooked calls, book calls, that just nobody hit the green button for, right? And it, it, they never logged anywhere. Make sure to do so. An easy way to, to kind of build that habit, create a custom field, right? So we go into our settings. We go to move my head up here, custom fields. Create one that says, did you hit the green bubble? Make it job record, display on the call booking screen, make this required. You give one option here, right? A drop down says, got it. And that's it. That's the only option you get. Save this anytime that your team is picking up a call before they're done with that job booking screen, they're going to have to answer that question. They're going to have to tell you, yes, I hit the green bubble. As long as they're doing that, you're going to be in good shape. Your call booking rate will magically improve. Um, so, so far we've covered two. How do I make sure my revenue figures are right? How do I make sure my call booking rate is, is accurate? Other ones that you'll see a lot is a skew in conversion rates. Now, this is uh, between two things. Sometimes you see them where they are abnormally low, right? I'm talking like zero to 10 to 15%. Sometimes you'll see them abnormally high. When you scroll through a, uh, a set of technician scorecards, like I'll do last year here, right? See 50s. If you see zeros across the board here, right? Especially if you're looking at, let's say, a maintenance department, right? Um, honestly, if your scores are too low and you see a ton of zero, it's probably because these technicians are going on jobs, selling nothing, right? Getting absolutely nothing on an invoice when really you never thought they would anyway. Things like a, a, a tune-up for a member, right? If I'm sending my technician out on that job, Am I expecting them really to put anything else onto the invoice and upsell that uh, that customer? Not necessarily. They're going there because this is a prepaid visit. Go out, perform our end of the deal, move on with your day. The conversion rate, all this is really measuring, right? Is, hey, this job, I put a number in place to say, did you reach X dollar value. If so, great. Let's mark up your conversion rate. If not, not good. We're going to take you down. We'll get to that number in a second. That's kind of the flip side of this. But if you have technicians going to $0 jobs that should be $0 jobs, what you need to do is make sure these are no charge by default. So I'm going to go into my settings here. I'm going to navigate to my job types. If I am looking at a tune up, right? Let's say. Yeah, of course, within within the dummy system, I didn't build one. But let's say for sake of argument, generator install, right? If I'm sending over an installer, I, I don't necessarily expect them to upcharge anything, right? Same deal as I would with a tune-up, right? This sold threshold being one, that means if they show up and don't at least net me $1 on that invoice, fail right? Knock their, knock their, uh, sold or their, um, conversion rates down. As long as you have this no charge by default on the job types where you expect nothing to go on those invoices anyway, you're going to be fine. It essentially takes that out of the equation of their conversion rates. So if granted, if you do have a technician out there performing some, some, uh, like preventative maintenance for one of your club members, and they just so happen to upcharge on that job. By all means, if they do convert on one of those jobs, it will still then boost it. But you think of it almost like uh, like extra credit back in high school, right? That's that, that's sort of where you're at on that front. It will, if you perform something, I didn't expect you to, I'll give you the credit for it. Great. But if you don't, no harm, no foul. That's what that no charge by default does. You want to make sure you've got that on for any job you know should have $0 invoices. Because what happens is everybody's showing up with 0% conversions. And really, it's not their fault at all. They shouldn't have even been listed here, right? Um, it will then kill your overall conversion rate. So you want to make sure that you're not holding your maintenance techs or your install teams accountable for these kind of things. Moving on. 
the flip side to that, right? If you see everybody on your uh, on your tech scorecards with 100% conversions across the board, that's pretty unrealistic too, right? The reason that you see this often is your uh, sold thresholds on these job types is likely set to either $0 or $1. Honestly, one is better than zero, right? Because if you have $0 as a sold threshold, like I'll say filter change here, right? My sold threshold, $1. What this essentially means, if my tech goes out and walks away with a $0 invoice, he did not convert that job, knock that conversion rate down. But if he goes out and just puts $1 onto this invoice, mission accomplished, great work. The problem here is let's, I have a trip charge of $69. It, by its very nature, as long as a trip charge is on that invoice, he's converted every time. I might not make anything more than that $69, right? But the system is saying, great work. So as you can imagine where we're going here, this $1, don't, don't leave these at a dollar. I know it's better than nothing, but what you really want to think of this as, what is my absolute floor that if I send a technician out and they come back from a filter change with any less than 30 bucks, then what did I even do this for? You know, I, I might as well have not had them out there. It cost me more in overhead than I really made in revenue. At that point, you want to set this $1 above that floor. So let's say I say, you know, $29 is the least I'm willing to accept. Make this $30. And if they hit that 30 mark, great, awesome, converted job. Otherwise, it's going to knock as a demerit. This is, for all intents and purposes, when you're looking at a, a modular dashboard, it's kind of the all-important metric for a service technician, for example, right? You want to make sure that these are lined up because right now, the system, if you don't have no charge by default, turned on whenever it needs to be right when this number is a zero in in reality right where you you say you don't need to collect anything to succeed make sure it's no charge so that, that way you're not getting a, a ton of um a ton of plummets to your your overall conversion rate but also make sure if it's not a no charge have an idea in your mind of what that floor is and set this one dollar above for my example, right, if I have a $69 dispatch charge, this then becomes $70. Always, always, always $1 above a dispatch fee, a diagnostic fee, a trip charge, anything like that you have that you know this is table stakes just for us to show up. Make sure this is above that number and end and of story, right? That will magically your conversion rates between no charge when it needs to be and any other time, make sure you have a sold threshold. You'll be good as gold. You'll be able to get very, very, very accurate numbers from tech scorecards immediately. The, um, the last thing for y'all that I wanted to talk about, now that we've covered those areas, another thing I hear a lot is, hey, whenever I look at these scorecards, no matter what division I'm looking at, everything on here is incorrect. Like I'm never seeing, whenever I'm looking at sales, I wanna get an overview of my sales technicians and how they're performing on these numbers. The way that this works, it all comes down to how your business units within settings are mapped to the business units on the tech scorecards. So what that means for us is we can go through right here on business unit mappings, right? And it will pull up all the business units I have. Do I actually want them to show on my uh, tech scorecards? Keep in mind, this is not business units for the employee or the technician, I should say. It is a, um, a business unit for jobs performed. So if I have a service technician that goes out and somebody accidentally sets the job for HVAC sales, right? Then my service tech is going to show up here under a sales scorecard. So it's, it's very based around the job and the invoice. It is important to make sure your invoices and your jobs are set to the proper business units for this reason. But as I go through my divisions here, right? And which of these, these will show you, it's tough whenever none of this is uh, is loading up. Let me see if I can't get the last year. You'll notice a couple of different fields for each one of these, right? Everybody is, uh, each of your divisions within here are going to be measuring different things, right? I, I, I The way I grade 
the performance of a sales technician versus a service tech, totally different, right? So Service Titan does us the favor of giving us a couple different scorecards. What you wanna make sure though, is that you have all of your business units mapped to the division that, that meets what you're looking for. In an ideal world, your business units neat, fit neatly in here with install, service, maintenance, sales. Great, you're in, out, it's done. Um, if not, you want to at least get the closest approximation whenever you're looking at this, like, you know, total sales, average sales, close rate. If you've got certain business units, you're like, ah, I don't know. They're, it's not necessarily sales, but not necessarily service, not necessarily maintenance. At that stage, you just want to say like, all right, let me take a peek at these divisions. Just see which one kind of grades the way I'd like to grade these technicians doing these jobs. That stage, you go in here. You map this out so that my electric install, yes, I want to grade them on the install scorecard. But remember, gang, it's not necessarily saying take all my um, install electricians and show them on here and give me the scores. It's for any technician that was on a job with that business unit, they're going to read up on here. So you do want to be mindful. It's all job based, really, you know, and it's all invoice based, I should say. Um, and what business unit fits there. As long as your business units are mapped accordingly, generally, it's, it comes down to just, hey, whenever you're, uh, you're posting, batching, exporting, all that, make sure that your business units line up there. You probably want to make sure they do just before they go over to accounting anyway. Um, this impacts plenty of reports, not just this one, but as long as your business units are mapped here, you're going to get good scorecards. So all that said, at the end of the day, gang, this this screen for for all the folks that have it that it hasn't been uh, hasn't been giving you the kind of information you want largely it comes down to just giving you inaccurate revenue numbers inaccurate call booking rates inaccurate conversion rates and a jumbled up scorecard if you follow the steps in these videos all of those issues can be resolved immediately nice touch with this thing being real time is the changes you make take action right now and you can go in and look at a good uh, dashboard out of the gate immediately. Um, if you have any questions on this, please, please, please feel free to reach out to us here at the Graphite Lab. We'd love to set up time to look at your dashboard, see what kind of ways we can help you maximize. And um, yeah, look forward to uh, catching up with you soon. Have a good one.